Hello everyone, welcome back to our Marketing Cloud API series. In the last video, you would have seen how to set up the install package in Marketing Cloud. In this video, we will see how to set up external clients such as Postman to work with the Marketing Cloud APIs. We will set up a Postman collection that can help you get started with both the, the REST and the SOAP API requests, and uh, we will even try getting an auth token from Marketing Cloud using the REST API as well. Now, if you Google for uh, Postman Marketing Cloud uh, APIs, uh, you will come across this uh, great collection that a few of the community experts in Marketing Cloud have actually created. Um, so um, I'll post the link to this in the video description. So you can go here and then uh, you will see that there's a bunch of API collections. Uh, you need to go to the Marketing Cloud API one. Um, so click on the three dots next to this one here and you need to click on Export. And then uh, it will show you the latest version uh, that's recommended for download, right? You'll be able to export this as a JSON file. So uh, go ahead and, and select the latest recommended version, click on export, and save this JSON file to your local uh, folder on your computer. Now, I already have this uh, saved to my uh, computer, so I'm just not going to download this. But in your case, go ahead and save it to a local folder so that we can import that into Postman. Okay, I'll cancel out of here. If you don't have a Postman client installed on your laptop, uh, go ahead and download that from Google uh, and install the, the appropriate version for your uh, operating system. And then once you have it installed, uh, open the Postman client. The first thing that you would need to do is like create a, a new workspace by going into workspace. Um, I've created all the uh, one for AS the SFMC API series. Okay. Once you have the workspace, um, select collections, click on import. And then with file selected, go ahead, uh, click Upload Files, and then uh, use the, the JSON file that we just um, downloaded from the other Postman collection that we saw earlier. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and click Open. Uh, you will see uh, it shows the Marketing Cloud APIs, the Postman collection version that we saw earlier. Uh, go ahead and click Import. And then you should see the collections loaded here with the appropriate folders. You'll see messaging and journeys and uh, the list of all the different REST API requests as well as the SOAP API requests that are uh, available in the collection. So once you click the, the root folder here, uh, you will notice that there is a pre-request script uh, written in the collection. Now this script is actually executed uh, every time uh, before you execute any of the other requests uh, in the collection. Okay, and, and what the script actually does is it actually checks for the access token uh, if it has expired uh, and if it's beyond 18 minutes since the last time you actually took the access token, uh, then it will, it will go and request for a new token and store that in an environment variable. And the best practice is um, not to keep asking for an access token every time you do an API request, right? So that's why they have the script here. Um, and um, so we store the, the access token once you retrieve that in an environment variable which will be used in the headers along with uh, the API request that you send across. So once it's expired, um, it'll automatically go and fetch the new token and store that so that you can use it with the subsequent API requests. So when you actually um, move the, the logic into your code uh, to call the different API requests, uh, make sure you have a similar logic like this implemented in your code as well uh, to store the time uh, when you actually fetch the, uh, the ac access token. And then uh, to keep checking like and if 18 minutes have passed and if it has passed, go and fetch the, the new access token and start using that in your subsequent API requests. Now also on the uh, specific uh, API root folders, like for the, the REST API, uh, if you go, you will again see a prerequisite script. Uh, here, what it's done is like they've added the, the headers, uh, content type is application JSON, and in the authorization header, um, they've added the bearer space, the access token that we have stored, uh, which we retrieve it uh, when we run the, the prerequisite script on the, on the root level. Right, um, so these two headers are um, added by default for any of the REST API scripts uh, that you run. Um, so you don't have to like specifically add that uh, in each of the individual API requests. But if you're creating uh, your own REST API request outside this collection, then make sure like you add the content type as application JSON uh, and the authorization with the bearer space the access token that you get. On the SOAP API, uh, you will see that there is a prerequisite script. Again, the content type is uh, text slash XML, for this case, not JSON. And you don't need to specify the authorization header here. For, for the SOAP, it's actually included inside the XML body. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. Now, in order for the scripts um, in this uh, API collection to work, 
uh, there are a bunch of variables that have been provided that we need to go and set up. Um, and these variables are used across, uh, even in the prerequisite script, as well as across the REST and uh, SOAP API requests. Okay, um, so the four that you need to set are, are the subdomain, the client ID, the client secret, and the MID. Uh, the uh, token refresh time and the access token will automatically be updated by the script. Uh, the one that we saw here, the prerequisite script, uh, it will automatically update these two variables uh, back here. Okay, so now uh, we will go back and check the values uh, from our install package uh, that we did in the previous video, and then uh, add those values here under initial and current value. So if you remember, this is the uh, API integration package that we uh, created uh, previously. Um, so this is the client ID, the client secret, uh, and uh, you will see that the beginning part of this is the, the tenant-specific um, you know, subdomain. Uh, so let me copy this one, uh, and let's go back to our Postman. Uh, I'll try to paste that here, and I'll remove the HTTPS part and the dot alt as well. Uh, we only need the subdomain. Um, and I'll show you in a minute why we are not using the rest of it. So if you go to the prerequisite script, you will see that it's already you know, appending the uh, HTTPS um, and the dot alt marketing cloud APIs, all that uh, already here. And it, it only looks for that tenant specific uh, subdomain string. Right, so make sure that when you copy it, you only put that values in here. Okay, the rest of it is all the appended in the scripts. Okay, now we need to get the client ID. So let's go back here, copy the client ID, copy, going back to our postman, and make sure, like you know, you have it in, in the current value as well, or it will not work. Okay, so in the script, let's go back to client secret. And the MID is my default. Copy this. Going back. OK, so I've set up um, the first four fields here for the variables. Um, and these two I'm going to leave blank. Um, and that should be it. Now we'll save this collection after having saved the variables. Uh, and let's test this out. We'll go into the auth. Uh, we will go to the request SFMC token. Uh, and as you can see here, um, like you know, if you hover over the ET subdomain, if it shows the initial and the current variable set up correctly, um, in, it will actually show when you, when you hover over that particular variable, right? Uh, let's go to the body here. Um, and the body for the access token, uh, we like we saw earlier, like it was the client credentials. You need to pass the client ID, the client secret. Uh, the account ID is optional. Um, since we have configured it, we'll pass that. Uh, if you don't specify the scope, uh, you will be able to like access the full scope in our install package, right? And in the test, you will see that once the access token has been received back, it will automatically, uh, you know, set the DNA ET access token variable uh, that we have already defined in the root level here. Okay, so you, you will set that access token and update that. Okay. So let's go back here and run this and see if it works. Great. So as you can see, like we retrieved uh, the access token back uh, successfully. The token type is bare, and you will see that it expires in about 18 minutes. And you will see the entire scope here. Uh, because we didn't specify any scope here, it will give you the back the end, the full scope that's defined in our uh, install package, and also the SOAP and the REST uh, instance URL as well. Now, if you go back to the variables the, where we set up the uh, initial four ones, uh, like I said, uh, it will go and run the, the pre-request script, uh, which is why the DNA uh, token refresh time has automatically been updated here as well. Uh, so the next time I run any of the other requests, it will actually check has 18 minutes passed from this particular time. If it has, it will uh, request for a new token. If it has not, it will uh, reuse the existing token here for the, the API request that I'm using. So with that, we've seen um, how to set up the Postman collection to work with our Marketing Cloud uh, install package. Uh, and I mostly use Postman for testing out the API requests the first time, like especially because it has all the built-in scripts available. Uh, most of the routes and requests that we need are already there in the collection. But if you find that you know any are missing in the collection, uh, we can always go back and check the documentation and add them to the collection for our future use.
Okay. And we'll definitely go through a, a few of the API requests available in the Postman collection uh, in, a, in a, some of the future videos and see how to use them. Okay. Thank you for watching.